how's it going? For today's video, let's take an up close and personal, in-depth look at the all-new 2015 Lamborghini Huracan. So this is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Huracan. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping of the performance data, take it on a test drive, not to mention show you much of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. Before we begin, as a courtesy, I'd like to extend a big thanks and shout out to Lamborghini Carolinas of Greensboro, North Carolina for providing the Huracan featured in today's in-depth review. In addition to Lamborghini master technician John Hooper for assisting with the extensive drive shots. For more information on the rest of their exotic inventory, please check out the link provided in the description box below. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up. Let her run. This exterior color is a very unique pearl effect known as Verde Mantis, one of 19 available colors including 5 matte variants. Paired with the narrow a day, unicolor sportivo interior with Verde accent stitching and a combination of Napa leather and Alcantara. Full leather and two-tone options are also available in a variety of colors. Like the Aventador, the Uricon utilizes keyless ignition hidden underneath the fighter jet style flip-up red cap in the center console. To start, make sure you have the key fob within the interior, hold the brake and hit the button. If you want to turn on accessory power without starting the engine, simply hit the button without touching the brake. The car starts in the default Strata driving mode. We'll discuss driving modes more in a second, but a quick fun fact, if you manually select Sport while in accessory power, you can go ahead and open up the dual mode exhaust allowing for a louder sound upon startup. The dual mode exhaust with vacuum actuated bypass valve is standard. In Strata, it opens automatically at 4200 RPM, but remains fully open in both Sport and Corsa modes. An important note to point out is that this Huracan features the optional racing exhaust that you can order through Lamborghini's Accessory Originality program. The note is otherworldly, with snarls, crackles, and pops that sound legendary in person. So let's start it in Strata mode first before comparing it with Sport. If you listen closely, you can hear the bypass valve open and close with respective sound changes between Strata and Sport. Now for Sport Mode. Direction is performed through a new electro-hydraulic steering system, with the option of Lamborghini Dynamic Steering or LDS which allows for variable ratios that are tied with the car's three driving modes, which we'll cover in just a second. Loosening or tightening the steering is necessary. At low speeds below 31 miles an hour, the steering provides the most assistance to aid in easy parking and low speed maneuvering, but at speeds greater than 62 miles an hour it changes the ratio for more precision and less overall assistance. 
The new three-spoke leather-clad steering wheel was designed to be more user-friendly than the Gallardo setup while including various hexagonal cubes. The thick rim has pronounced bolsters up top and a flat-bottom race-inspired theme with satin gray trim. The highlight of driver engagement is the new Enema system, composed of three distinct driving modes, Strata, Sport, and Corsa, which are selected via the red toggle switch in the bottom spoke of the steering wheel. Strata is Italian for a street or a road and is relatable to a comfort mode. Sport dials things up a bit and opens up the dual mode exhaust, while Corsa or Race in Italian tunes the car for hardcore performance and handling. Anima stands for Adaptive Network Intelligent Management and regulates a whole host of systems from transmission programming to engine and throttle response, speed to the variable ratio steering, stiffness of the magnetorological dampers, and all-wheel drive settings. Enema is also the Italian word for soul, which seems appropriate as no matter which mode that you're in, the car delivers a distinct personality, seamlessly adapting the systems to deliver an impressive level of performance respective to the driving scenario. In Strada, the steering lights, gear changes are performed automatically with an end goal of better fuel economy, and when equipped with magnetic ride control, the shocks are set to their softest setting and stability control is in full effect. When moving the switch to Sport or Corsa, the steering firms up, the exhaust becomes louder, the shocks firms up, and the gear changes are held longer while in automatic mode. You have the option of selecting gears manually, but in Corsa mode it defaults to full manual shifting. The all-wheel drive system has a default torque split of 30-70% between the front and rear, with the ability to send up to 50% of the torque to the front or 100% to the rear depending on the driving mode and road condition. Improving ergonomics is a similar concept that was first seen with the Ferrari 458, incorporating all the necessary driving controls within the steering wheel spokes, rather than the column mounted stalks. Items such as the turn signals, wipers, and high beams were relocated, which allowed for the use of larger, easier to use panel shifters. Digital instrument clusters are becoming ever more popular in the premium segment, and the Uricon is no exception, with a 12.3 inch reconfigurable display with the controls on the left hand side of the steering column going between your tachometer, speedometer, and dual yielding your infotainment and navigation systems. I'll show you how it all works a little bit more in depth later during the interior portion. As far as the gearbox, the Uricon incorporates an all new 7 speed dual clutch automated manual transmission known as Lamborghini Doppia Frisione or LDF. It offers a huge performance and drive quality advantage over the Gallardo single clutch 6 speed E gear automated manual. It's similar in design to the S-Tronic gearbox in the Audi R8, but with bespoke gear ratios for Lamborghini. In addition to standard launch control, it also has the ability to pre-select gears with downshifts and rev match. Launch control is activated by switching the vehicle into Corsa mode and disabling stability control. Once you do that, press the brake with your left foot and simultaneously hit the accelerator with your right foot. The car will rev past 4000 RPM, which at that point, you're ready to release the brake for maximum takeoff. And so we're going to flip on the full LED headlamps and rear fog lamps. And the hazards. Both windows are fully automatic. And let's go and check out the exterior. This year, Lamborghini launches the all new, highly anticipated replacement for the Gallardo, the brand's most successful production model since 2004. With just over 14,000 units produced, not only was it the highest volume Lamborghini ever, making up about half of the brand's total sales since 1963, but it opened the doors to a wider variety of clientele, offering a smaller and relatively more affordable counterpart to the Brawny Murcielago. With some pretty substantial shoes to fill, it called for much more than simple evolution, but a complete model revolution that boasts a new chassis that combines aluminum and carbon fiber along with better performance, better economy, and better overall quality. So let's start with the basics before we delve further into the Uricon. For starters, the 5.2 liters of V10 engine displacement continue from the Gallardo, but feature a host of economy and power upgrades. Like its predecessor, the name says it all. LP610-4 stands for Longitudinale Posteriore, which means the longitudinal engine is mounted behind the seats just ahead of the rear axle. 
610 refers to the vehicle's metric horsepower rating. When converted to brake horsepower, it's around 602, which represents a 50 horsepower increase over the 552 horsepower Gallardo. Torque also sees a modest bump by 15 pound-feet. Last, the 4 refers to Ford-driven wheels or all-wheel drive. If the car was rear-wheel drive, it would be denoted by a 2 for two-driven wheels. And like Lamborghinis of the past, the car's name is also derived from a famous Spanish fighting bull. These increases in power and economy numbers are aided by a new IDS fuel injection system, otherwise known as a Dizioni Directa Stratificata. This unique system combines both port and direct fuel injection for improved top-end performance and initial fueling for better economy and emissions. When combined with standard cylinder deactivation and auto start-stop, the Huracan is far more efficient than the Gallardo. Underneath the seductive aluminum sheet metal, the Huracan's structure is based on Volkswagen Group's latest modular sports car architecture that will also provide the base for the next generation Audi R8. It's primarily composed of aluminum, unlike the carbon fiber intensive structure of the Aventador, while carbon fiber does make its appearance in key areas such as the central tunnel, B pillars, part of the side sills, and the rear bulkhead that separates the passenger compartment from the engine bay. The cross brace in the engine bay is also composed of carbon fiber. Therefore, the chassis alone weighs less than 440 pounds while also increasing safety. Dry weight is claimed to be around 3,100 pounds, which, according to Lamborghini, is somewhat comparable to the Gallardo, with the Huracan benefiting from a 10% weight reduction and a 50% gain in torsional rigidity. Outside, the Huracan dramatically differs from the Gallardo in its overall design elements. It carries a bit of a Venador inspiration, but with a unique classic twist. The silhouette defines the primary wedge shape with a single line that stretches from the front and over the passenger compartment before tapering off at the rear. Lamborghini's latest design language relies heavily on geometric shapes, namely hexagons. Throughout the exterior, including the LED headlamps, intake grills, front and rear, embedded side glass, and more, you'll find hexagonal cues that reminisce back to the wild Sesto Elemento, with somewhat of a classic 60s look that will highlight more inside. While the Gallardo has a comparable shape, the Huracan looks more tame, refined, and sleek than its sharp-edged predecessor. Even though it may look smaller, the Huracan is in fact longer by 4.6 inches in length and 1 inch in width. Height remains the same. Front track widens by nearly 1.5 inches, while rear track is about 1 inch wider. I've seen the overall shape described as being more feminine, with a notable increase in curves, flowing lines, and body creases to balance out the ankles. It doesn't look quite as raw and simple as before, but far more elegant and thought out. With many unique details, it can be easily described as a sculpted work of art that still retains a signature Lamborghini aggressive flavor. The LED lighting front and rear carry similar Y-shaped styling cues, and overall the Huracan's styling is very three-dimensional, especially in the rear where you can see the body details seem to be layered upon each other, especially with the inset hexagonal grille and the rear tail lamps. Highlighted by satin black lower diffuser and massive quad polished pipes with perforated inner liner. Like many cars in this segment, it was designed with aerodynamics in mind, with a 50% increase in downforce and a slight reduction in drag without the addition of active aero components such as retractable spoilers. As far as the wheels, this Huracan features a set of asymmetric forged aluminum wheels measuring 20 by 8.5 inches in front and 20 by 11 inches in the rear, wrapped in custom design Pirelli P0 tires, 245-30s in front and 305-30s in the rear tested to hold over 1G of lateral cornering forces. To balance the Huracan's high-performing powertrain, the car comes standard with a high-performance braking system consisting of carbon ceramic cross-drilled discs at each corner. They measure 15 by 1.5 inches in front and 14.2 by 1.3 inches in the rear, clamped by 6-piston and 4-piston calipers respectively. With this setup, the car is able to stop from 62 miles an hour in a short 104.7 feet. Supporting the Huracan is a fully independent forged aluminum double wishbone suspension front and rear with coil springs and anti-roll bars. Magnetorological adaptive dampers along with the variable ratio steering like we touched on earlier can be had at an additional cost. Underneath you also see a plethora of sound insulation to help keeping the interior more quiet than the Gallardo. Overall length is 175.6 inches with a width of 75.7 inches and a height of 45.9 inches, riding on a 103.1 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight, depending on how equipped, is around 3,400 pounds with 58.3% of that weight over the rear axle. 
So let's discuss some detailed specs. The Uracon is powered by an all-aluminum 5.2 liter V10 fed through a combination of port and direct fuel injection. It carries a dry sump lubrication system, double overhead cams, 4 valves per cylinder, dual variable valve timing, and a compression ratio of 12.7 to 1. As somewhat of an evolution of the Gallardo engine, it still features the same undersquare 84.5 by 92.8 mm bore and stroke dimensions respectively, in addition to a 90 degree engine layout and revised forged aluminum internal components. Performance numbers include an impressive 602 horsepower at 8,250 rpm and 413 pound-feet of torque at 6,500 rpm. The engine's red line is a lofty 8,500 rpm, with 75% of the torque being available as low as 1,000 rpm. This allows the all-wheel drive Uricon to accelerate to 62 miles an hour in a manufacturer-claimed 3.2 seconds, while achieving 124 miles an hour in 9.9 .9 seconds, all the way to its top speed of 202 miles an hour. Real-world testing has yielded 0 to 60 times between the mid and high 2 second range, with quarter mile times around 10 and a half seconds at 135 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the Uracon is rated by the EPA at 14 miles to a gallon in the city and 20 on the highway, while running on premium fuel that's carried within a 21.1 gallon tank. As dramatic as the exterior is, the interior follows similar suit, best in Gallardo in every way possible from comfort and visibility to build quality and simplicity. Everything is wrapped in supple double stitched leather or traced in soft Alcantara. While some elements are evolved, some are new including the 12.3 inch TFT reconfigurable instrument display that also incorporates your infotainment and sat nav system. Therefore, the center stack looks cleaner and less crowded than before. Just about everything in the interior has some sort of hexagon theme, just like the exterior like we talked about earlier. Very reminiscent of the Sesto Elemento and even has a little bit of a classic inspiration from the 1967 Lamborghini Marzal concept, especially with the middle trim piece running across the entire center portion of the dash separating the upper and lower portions. These Sportivo seats feature a combination of Napa leather and Alcantara, full leather upholstery is available including more premium surfaces. These also have the optional power adjustment including 4-way power lumbar, but manual is standard and you can also opt for carbon fiber racing seats a little later on. Side airbags are standard. The two-tone interior options and accent stitching package give off such a cool vibe I can't imagine having it any other way. It really highlights the great attention to detail put into each vehicle. Logo, the aluminum entry guards down below, also in a hexagon pattern, color accented floor mats, aluminum sport pedals, and a manual tilt telescoping steering wheel. Like I said, the entire upper portion of the dash is wrapped in double accent stitching and leather with Alcantara lower portions. The dash also features kind of a layered design with a speedometer binnacle that looks like it's just floating on top and air vents that look like they're rising out from within. The headliner is Alcantara and you have a floating center console. So let's go ahead and see if she sounds. First, in Strata. Mm-hmm. 
The standard audio system for the Uricon consists of six speakers, a CD player, Bluetooth, iPod, auxiliary integration, USB input, as well as a built-in hard drive for MP3 storage. It's basically a warmed over version of Audi's newest generation MMI system. All of your main controls are located in the center stack here, with a little rotary wheel in the bottom left and four quadrant buttons to correspond to different menus, shortcut keys, radio modes, volume, and more. It's all routed through the infotainment system up here that you can also blow up and make it full screen. Beautiful high res graphics and displays, and I'll show you all the various features of it in just a second. Sloping windshield and Alcantara lined a pillar with small quarter window in the front for better visibility. Your visors are also wrapped in Alcantara. Nice slender lightweight design. Up in the top stack you have your microphones for the hands-free Bluetooth telephone, interior illumination, and reading lamps. All LED. As we continue on, the first thing that you'll notice at the top portion of the center console is a little digital instrument display with three status gauges. Oil pressure, oil temperature, and your voltometer. Right beneath that is a little control panel with a variety of different commands, including your power windows, front end lift, stability control, parking sensors, and your hazard switch. They work just like toggles in an airplane cockpit and have a great feel and nice finish to them. As far as the single zone automatic climate control system, it's pretty easy to use. In its standard form, you use the wheel in the middle to rotate between your different temperatures. You'll see the blue and red indicators light up. If you want to adjust the fan speed, simply hit the fan button and use the same wheel. Same goes for the different zones. Three-stage heated seats for both the driver and passenger with front defrost. Across either side of the center console, you have some padded material to provide a nice comfortable spot to rest your leg while driving. You have a padded center console as well, lined in Alcantara in this model, with a modest amount of space, your iPod integration, and 12-volt power outlet. And in the back below the parcel shelf, you have your single disc CD player and two SD card inputs. So now let's talk a little bit more about the features and functionality of the infotainment system. Like any other Audi based system, you have shortcut keys for the radio, media, navigation, and more, but you also have the quadrant buttons correspond to different sub menus and a rotary knob. In Lamborghini's application, there's no shortage of hexagon accents. So now we're in our main menu screen and we'll go ahead and check out tone or the different audio adjustments. It basically incorporates your different equalizer functions as well as customization for the navigation and telephone commands, using the rotary wheel to make your adjustments. If we go ahead and select radio, this is your satellite radio, FM, AM, and HD radio. You have your band where you can select the different options, different settings activating HD radio, you have different functions where you can do manual tuning, display radio text, seek, scan, and more. Not to mention store your preset stations. At the moment we're currently utilizing our CD in the media mode. If you select an import, you can import songs via a variety of features such as SD card inputs, USB, and CDs. Activate all of the different media modes from source including the jukebox which stores all of those imported songs. Detailed settings and functions is similar to the radio screen where you can seek, fast forward, rewind, and pause tracks. You can also see some of the song and album artwork as available. If we scroll on over to navigation, it brings up our high res display, it's a beautiful instrument. You can also see a command in all four of the quadrants which you would use the quadrant buttons. There's real-time traffic updates as standard, and if you hit destination, you can also go into your points of interest, store addresses, favorite locations, and more. It's fairly self-explanatory, but it takes just a second to get used to. Back in our main menu, if we go over to info, that just brings up your real-time traffic updates once more, and you can also bring in some detailed settings and have it read it to you. Our hands-free Bluetooth telephone is located at the far left, where you can pair a phone, store numbers, and voice dial. Within the car screen, there's a number of interactive menus with some cool Uricon graphics. Within the vehicle settings, you have some customizable options such as locking and lighting, driver assist has rain sensing windshield wipers, speed warning, and parking aid activation. Service and checks is basic vehicle diagnostics where you can check on various settings. You can also put the wipers into their service position, reset your tire pressure monitoring system, and more. In the top right hand corner you have your setup MMI unit for different customizable options pertaining to the overall system, and to the left hand side you have your clock adjustments. 
But in a nutshell, those are all the basic features of the infotainment system in the Lamborghini Huracan. There's also a few other key pieces of information I'd like to point out, including the vehicle temperature off to the right, digital speed, and temperature readout, and on the left hand side you have your date, time, radio data, fuel, and what gear you're in. Alrighty. Let's go ahead and shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now let's talk a little bit about storage space. Like any other supercar in this category, cargo space up front is quite minimal. There's a little parcel shelf behind the front seats if you need a little bit of extra storage. But in the Uricon, it's around 4 cubic feet up front with a little bit of LED illumination and a 12 volt power outlet. It's really just enough space for a small suitcase, briefcase, or duffel bag. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments, including four-way power lumbar, that you find on the driver's seat. There's also a lockable glove box down below, lined in felt with a modest amount of space. With the many advancements Lamborghini has brought to the table, the Huracan is destined for great success as it builds upon what made its predecessor special. While the technology improves and refinements are made, it's nice to see the classic Lamborghini soul remains, just repackaged and enhanced for a modern era. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the all new 2015 Lamborghini Huracan. Be sure to stay tuned next time. There's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.